Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. How you doing today? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing fantastic. I hope everything is going well for you and your loved ones. Or today, I hope they be very yeah, okay. Aquaba, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for coming. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell. This way, whenever I upload a video, you will be the first to know. And if you are returning, and you haven't subscribed already? Abazineri Chan, what are you waiting for? Didn't cry now, Chang. You know, just hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell. This way, whenever I upload a video, you would definitely be the first to know. Thank you. Now, I am sharing with you 31 things that I have learned while building a house in Ghana as a woman. Yes, I have learned so many, 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 many lessons, but I am choosing to share 31 things that I have learned with you. Lesson number three. And today's lesson is about not paying more than 50% of the charge of the labor. Perhaps start off with paying 30% while the job has started. You know, let's just say uh, if the job is going to take 10 days then maybe within the third or fourth day you can pay a third of the labor cost because if you don't do that and you pay more than that they're not that hungry they're not that hungry because they've secured you know or they've gotten more than 50 percent of the cost and they will go somewhere else work over there and then whenever they feel like it come to your site to complete the work or come to the site to continue the work because they know that they have secured a contract with you because they have secured the job with you they have nothing to lose but to go and try and make money elsewhere and come back and finish your work and come back and continue your work is that what you want i don't think so so let me save you a headache or two by ensuring that you don't give them um you don't trust them you know once you gain your trust you might be you know feel like oh i've gained them i've gained their trust they're definitely going to come back but they are there some are there to gain your trust and once you let your guard down they will take advantage of that so just make sure that doesn't happen to you all right if you are building your house and you have contracted the masons the carpenter the plumber the electrician whoever it is that you have hired to work on your house on your building project make sure that you don't pay more than 30 30 percent of the labor i will say you know get your own materials if you can buy your own materials get the estimate you know go and buy your own materials if you can't go and buy your own materials go with someone who is an expert or someone who know a thing or two about building materials or just take the list and go to um, the warehouse, the area, the stores or wherever they sell that particular supply or supplies. Just go there and get your own supplies, right? And if you can't do that, go with the artisan, go with the mason, go with the electrician, go with the plumber, go with the um, steel bender. I don't know. Just go with whomever it is that you have hired to work on your project. Go with them. Go to the store with them to purchase your materials. I have gone to the um, timber factories, you know, where you buy woods and timbers, electric, electrical stuff. I I have gone to um, buy my own cement. I have gone to even buy my own water at the river, um, which is um, Wager River. I have driven myself there and hired, you know, when you go there, you see, you know, the trucks or the um, what, uh, whatever tanks, the people that, you know, carry water, 
you know on certain particular water tanks and then bring it to your site i've gone there and negotiated with them you know and purchased my own material so today's topic is not about buying your own material today's topic is about making sure that you're not paying more than 30 percent of the labor and in that i wanted to start off with buying your own material so once you know that you have the cost um, the material, you know, taken care of. Once the material is taken care of, all is left is labor and maybe transportation. And then transportation, you you bought the stuff or you went with the artisan or you went with the um, worker, you know, to purchase the material. So you've already taken care of the material uh, of the materials. So what's left now is labor costs. And with labor costs, you want to make sure that they start the work or just negotiate with them, have a talk with them, tell them, listen, um, for this work that you're about to do, how long will you take to finish the work? And then say, okay, let's say three stages. Um, uh, let's just say, if they say two weeks, okay, so the first three days, I'm gonna give you, once you finish the first three days, I'm gonna give you this percent of the labor. At this stage, I'm gonna give you that percent of the labor. And then once the work is completed, I am going to give you the full balance, you know, the balance of the labor. Okay. So I'm right here in the jungle. I hear something. <laughs> anyway. I was distracted I digress so I would say that um, start off you know once they start doing the work and you have seen that they have you know completed a certain percent of the work then I would say pay 30 percent of the labor cost so let's say the labor cost is a thousand cities and they've worked on the project maybe five days or just pay maybe 300 cities you know pay 300 cities of what has been done and then from the next stage you pay the the next um the th uh, 33 percent and then once the job is completed then you pay the full the remaining balance once the job is completed then you pay the remaining balance because if you don't do that if you don't do that and you trust these people because some people may gain your trust they will be the nicest people then you know the nice then they will be the nicest person that you know the nicest artisan <laughs> that you know and then once they get the contract they will just disappear you know or they will just work on the on the job for a few days and then they know that they have once they know that they have secured the contract they will just take the money and go off to somebody else's you know site and work because they already know that they have secured this contract with you so if you've paid them 50 percent they really you know don't care too much because they've gotten the majority of the money anyway so why should they you know spend time working on your project when they can go somewhere else and work there and make money or they can go and get another contract somewhere and make money so you just make sure that you don't give them more than 50 percent of the labor cost because they're not going to show they may show up one the first day the second day the third day but they definitely most of them and let me not you know speak for everyone but most of them most of them from my experience will go somewhere else to do somebody else's job right and some may even spend the night or spend the you know they will even sleep at your site because you've given them the contract some you know workers like some masons you know workers like to sleep at the site so this way they'll get up early in the morning and work and not worry about you know coming to your site and not worry about taking transportation you know to come to your site they're already dead so they wake up in the morning freshen up get something to eat and then they will start working you know so a lot of them will spend the night and work on your site which i don't mind if you're working on the site i rather you know um, if it's possible, if it's necessary for you to sleep there, I, I don't mind doing that if it is feasible. This way you get up early in the morning and you get more done that way. However, if you pay them 50% of the money, most of them will stay at your, um, your site, spend the night at your site, get up in the morning and go somewhere else or go look for work somewhere else. And then every other day, every two days, every three days or so, they will come and work on your site. So definitely make sure that you are not paying them more than 50%. So pay them in stages, make an agreement with them in the beginning so that everybody understand that this is what we're dealing with. This is the agreement that we are dealing with. So they don't devi deviate from, you know, the agreement or breach, you know, the contract that you have written down for them right so 
definitely pay in stages buy your own materials make sure that you don't pay them the full amount that is just this this has happened to me for before i am really speaking from experience because it has happened to me not one time not two times several times a lot of people will gain your they will gain your trust and the thing is if you let your guard down if you just feel like oh you know feel so compassionate and just work with your emotions and just like oh this person is so nice it's so cool trust me once they gain your trust a lot of them will break your trust a lot of them will break them and then you will end up feeling like wow I trusted this person they come and work at my site and then they won't show up um, they you know they won't show up for one two three four days or at a time and they will go and work in, at somebody's site while you are waiting for your work to be completed and especially if you're not there let's say that you live outside of Ghana and you send the money home for someone to you know uh, work on your project or work on your house my friend my friend my friend that is even when they will try and go and work on somebody's site instead of your site because you're not there to chase them you're not there to police them you're not there to supervise them and even if you've hired someone to supervise them that person may not be there all the time that person may not be there a hundred percent of the time and therefore they will take advantage of it and go and work somewhere else and then show up at your site whenever they feel like it whenever they need you know um, money then they will show up at your site so make sure that you you really write up a contract you talk to them you know what you're dealing with you make an agreement with them and then you let them understand that listen I'm not going to tolerate this behavior this is how I work and if you want to work with me I expect you to abide by my rules and this is how we are going to handle this project you know i understand that some you know things happens beyond your control i understand that and i will take that into consideration however when you're here to work you're here to work you know i value you know uh, good work ethics you know some of them don't have good work ethics so just understand that if you give them more than 50% of the money some of them even a third of the money they may still you know go somewhere else and work on someone else's site or house or whatever and then come back to you later yours is secondary matter at this time because they have secured the contract with you they know that you have hired them you're not going anywhere else so just have an agreement with them and make sure that you know um, you don't pay them a, 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 a more than 50% of the labor cost for example some of my masons will spend the night at the site and work you know even when I'm there you know I'll just let them stay in the summer hut and then work you know this way we'll get the job done quicker but even when I was there down the street from my house i guess someone saw how they were working at my site how busy they were and everything and call the lead mason you know the the whoever was in charge you know of of the laborers and then say hey can you you know do something at my site for me blah 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 whatever you know agreement they made this guy left my site i'm like where is he i haven't seen him you know um, throughout the day I was busy going out and you know going in and out you know running errands and then I'm like where is where is I mean some of his artisans were there but he's the main guy was supposed to be there to supervise them but he wasn't doing that you know not knowing that he was working like four houses down the street four houses down the street he was working over there while he was supposed to be at my site working and also supervise the people that he had brought to work with you know and has taken even two of them to go with him to work there so you know they just said oh we're gonna go get something to eat or whatever you know sometimes they just leave the site and just take a break go and do whatever it is that they will do you know take a break and then come back and start working but this guy I found out was working like four houses down the street and then when I find out I'm like hey Aren't you supposed to be working here at my side? What are you doing over there? Oh, you know, the guy just said, you know, if I can do something right quick, blah, 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 this, 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 whatever it, whatever it was that he was saying did not make that much sense to me. So we had a talk and I told him if this happened again, I'm not going to work with him. 
So just make sure that you know you 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 have an agreement, you write something down, you let them understand. I mean, our culture is mostly oral culture, so you may not write something down, but just talk have a talk with them and let them understand that this is what I'm about. This is how I work. This is how I roll. Can you roll with me? If you can't roll with me, then let me find somebody else who is willing to roll with me, who, who is has a good at work ethic and who is willing to, you know, get the job done, you know, on time, you know? So yeah, this is some of the lessons that I have learned while building a house in Ghana. Make sure I know I sound like a broken record, but this is so true. You know, this is so true. Don't give them contractors. Don't give them most of the money, even even abroad. You know, when you give a contractor more than 50% of the money, a lot of them, even here, even, even outside of Ghana, some of them will do the same thing. So I'm not saying that this only happens in Ghana. This doesn't always happen in Ghana, but majority of the time it happens, you know, I would say, you know, a lot of the time it, ha it happens in Ghana because you really can't chase them around. A lot of them have two phones or two SIM cards and they can just easily switch, you know, their SIM card and be using the other number and you call them and call them and call them, chasing after them, asking them, where are you? They're, and they are nowhere to be found because they have another phone that they can use. So, so they're not worried about you. Okay. So yeah. So these are some of the lessons that I have learned while building a house in Ghana that I want to share with you. Let me know if there's something that you want me to talk about, leave a comment and I will try my best to make a video to address that. But I have learned so many lessons and I know that in my next project, I will take the lessons that I have learned with me and I will do much better. Once you know better, you do better, says Maya Angelo. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned something from this video. Make sure you share this video with someone that is building or someone that might be interested in learning one or two things about building a house in Ghana or Africa. Until then, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Well, this is all I have to say about lesson number three. But if you want to listen to more of my ranting, continue to watch. I have been hiking around for like almost 10 miles. Now, let me show you a little bit of my surrounding. As far as your eyes can see, there is nothing. I am on top of the mountain not the very very top but i'm very 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 high yeah yeah so i'm very high up on top of the mountain and i'm just deciding to make use of my time this uh, tripod that i have is so tiny when you fold it down it comes about this high up so i just usually put it in my backpack right here and i carry my backpack with me i have my the things that i need first aid kits water and everything in here so as i'm hiking i have decided you know to just record a video one or two videos while i'm here and share it with you the sun is beaming the weather feels good it's gonna get even hotter uh, maybe an hour from now so while this weather still feels nice i, I thought about you and i say hey you know let me share a lesson or two with my subscribers or viewers about lessons that i have learned while building a house in ghana particularly as a woman you know so with some of these artisans or with some of these workers or they don't respect a woman's authority as much as they will as respect a man's authority and especially if you are you know i'm not young but i look much younger than i look if i you know i'm not saying this myself i get that a lot so and being petite you know if i was like i am much bigger than my size i think they will still re they will respect my authority a little bit more but you have to learn to be assertive. You have to, you know, make sure that, you know, they are respecting your authority because you have hired them to work for you. And sometimes they don't, in the, in, in the beginning, they're not really taking you serious because they think that, you know, somebody else is putting you in charge of their project and it's not your project, you know? It's like, well, this cannot be your house. You cannot be doing this, you know? 
whose work is whose house is this is this your father's house you know is are you working on your father's house are you hiring us to work on your father's project or or maybe your husband's i don't know but i like to be nice to people but i like to be very assertive and i like to let them understand that look do not take my size sure. you know just make sure that you are assertive but you know nice get your point across in a, in a nice but assertive way and um let them know that you are not to be taken for you know granted and they should not underestimate you okay it's so good to get out in nature and move your body just move your body get out there you know i just love coming to nature just love hiking i love um i love hiking i love climbing mountains i love going to the mountains i love going to the beach i just love to be in nature you see this person behind me they are just biking and enjoying themselves so just get out there i walked about seven miles seven miles from home to this mountains and then once you get up you can just go for miles and miles and miles and miles probably to malibu yes to santa monica this mountains there's a lot california is very mountainous so there's mountain trails there's hiking trails everywhere it's nice if you can go hiking with friends or a friend or two you know but don't let that stop you if you can't find someone to just go hiking with you or you can't find someone who enjoys outdoors like you. If you can't find someone who enjoys nature like you, just, you know, be out there. You might but the point is, get out to nature and walk. I'm going down the hill. Going up any mountain or going up any hill is not easy, but going down is a breeze and it feels good. And that is exactly what I'm doing. Now I have about seven miles, you know, to go to get home, but it's okay. I'm going to enjoy it, you know, because the hard part is over and now going down. Sometimes you even have to, you know, make sure that you have to like brace yourself because you might go really, really fast out of control anyway i hope you have enjoyed hiking with me i will see you in the next video until then take care of yourself bye bye